Aren't you tired of seeing that? Aren't you tired of seeing people show off themselves? Aren't you tired of people just showing us and telling us how well they're doing? Uh, aren't you tired of preachers, people that are supposed to be promoting the gospel, that are busier about promoting themselves? And we have this amazing vessel to celebrate because as you get ready to They've got some fancy cars. They've got nice cars. And I don't begrudge a person from having nice cars, but when you want to put it on camera, you want to put on your Mercedes wagons, or you want to show that you're being chauffeured around in your limousine, your Escalade. Can you fly? You just look like yeah. all in the car. When you want people to see that you have a jet because you're special, you're smart, you've gone, you've attained something, and we could only wish we could have those things. Aren't we all tired of seeing those things? 80% of what I offer to help people transform is not available to the public, although I've worked very hard to make this page binge watchable. The point is my next video like this should be me coaching you. I heard a lot of influencers are doing fake jet videos these days, so I stopped the music. You can hear the engine and you can look over my right shoulder and see the takeoff. These are people that tell us that we're not the same as them, that they are special. They not like us. They not like us. They not like us. Life to them is one big photo shoot. We are war. Now you need to understand, this isn't me going out looking for their stuff. This is their stuff that's on their own Instagram profiles. These are the things that they are promoting. They want us to see how fabulous their life is, how they live. Hey, good morning. Could you imagine Jesus showing up uh, to preach or Paul or Peter with some sort of walk up music and the cameras and people taking a picture? Could you imagine that being the case? These are the people that, that literally Jesus spoke out about. Jesus says in Matthew 23, 5, he says, but they do all their deeds to be noticed by men for they broaden their phylacteries and lengthen their tassels of their garments. They love the place of honor at the banquets and the chief seats in the synagogues and respectful greetings in the marketplace and being called rapper by men. They want to be known as something. They want to be seen as something. They'll do virtually anything, stunts, tricks, you name it. This point is brought out in Acts 8, speaking about Simon the sorcerer. He's doing whatever because he wants to be someone great. The Bible says that he, were, he was doing these things, astonishing them with magic tricks. Why? Because the Bible says that he wanted to be what is called or wanted to be claimed uh, himself. He claimed himself to be someone great. He did, not them, but he was claiming to be someone great. He wanted to be seen that way. And then, of course, what does he do? He wants to try to buy the power of the Holy Spirit because he wants to maintain this level of people's perception or so he thinks how they perceive them. You want everyone to see how glorious and wonderful your life is. Could you imagine, by the way, being a woman? First of all, you should not be a preacher if you're a woman. But could you be? A, could you imagine being a woman, being a preacher, and showing off your uh, your clothing line or things like that? You, this particular person, looks more like someone modeling clothes than someone who's ready to preach the gospel. But then again, it makes sense because look who she's hobnobbed with, who she's linked up with. They, what is the old saying? Birds of a feather flock together. This is sort of the, the sort of lifestyle they want that they preach. They talk about going all of these different places in these nice, with these nice clothes and nice vehicles and living in nice places. Nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. The problem is it seems to be what you are after. This is what Jesus brings up when he says that uh, it is easy for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. Why? When you think about the, the rich young ruler who Jesus said, he said, I've done all these things that Jesus, and Jesus will sell your wealth. Let's just see what's more important, heaven or what you have. Uh, the Lord or all your treasure? Well, clearly uh, we see what it was because he walked away sad because he had a lot. So I guess if he were poor, eh, well, I don't have much to give up, so I'll give up. I'll, I'll give that up, that little bit up because I have nothing. But because I have what I have and I want what I want, uh, then Jesus, I'm going to have to just kind of either give you part time or very little time or no time. It go deep. Five good are boots you in. But when I ring, he rose gold. Then it's uh, nine thousand. He watch he Rolex. You know, it's eighty five. 
thousand ma US no gonna go no chaga pa suit e in it a seventeen phone e ye gold ya kanji kuzanda kango pe ah manje e ri manje mukuti e gold rega rega yen alpia na babu wang one bishop no jones one hundred and fifty thousand ma US they will literally brag about their wealth about what they have. How how disgusting is it? Who who's not tired of this about putting business over the Bible? As a matter of fact, making the Bible business. They are self-promoting pastors, if we can call them that. So you're doing all these things to sell your name by doing things that are controversial. There's a strategy to my foolishness. Uh huh. Okay. Yeah. You agree there's foolishness in it? Yes. Foolishness sells more than wisdom. So are you foolish? Of course. Everything is a photo shoot. As a matter of fact, uh, I want you not only to, even if I don't, even if I don't brag about it, I still want you all to see it. I want to have the nicest things in life. I want to be seen with the nice things. And maybe you know what they are. Maybe you can tell the value of them, but I won't tell you. But is that still, is that still wrong? Try Jesus, not me. This guy with preachers and sneakers, he chronicles what these people are wearing. They wear some expensive clothing. Me personally, uh, I don't shop in the nicest of places. Uh, even if I had, I don't have the money. But if I did have the money, I've never been gaudy like that anyway. But to go out and spend hundreds of dollars, thousands of dollars on just tennis shoes, on gold chains, on T-shirts, on sweaters, a few thousand dollars here, a few thousand dollars there. It just doesn't seem like one you're being a good steward of God's money, but you're also not being a very good shepherd of God's people. This particular video is called Meet My Cars. And so here we have Barbie, nice, look, beautiful car. Then we've got Lion, also a beautiful car. Then we've got Chanel, another beautiful car. And then this car just simply called Black. Not only is he bragging about the cars that he has, but he's also the kind of person, again, which when I say business over the Bible, that clearly is the case. Uh, he's even stating that you have to RSVP just to come to his particular church. You've got to put in a resume. You got to put in almost like an application. You have to apply and then see if you get approved to come in. I put I put in my my chance to come in. I never heard anything back. Thursday, don't miss the Jamal Bryant podcast. Let's be clear. It is clear what's important to them. What's important to them is them. But for us, be mindful. Paul tells us that if we have food and covering with these things, we shall be content. Doesn't mean that you should not want, if you've got an old beat up car, you shouldn't want a better car or a nice house. I'm not saying that. But if that's the goal, if that's the game, that you'll do anything, especially if you're in the position of being a pastor and the pastor is not being known for his doctrine, for his Bible teaching. Now think about this. All of the people that I spoke about that I showed, all of those folks, and there are many more like that, what are they known for? If the person in the pulpit is not known for the gospel, is not known for going through the scriptures and exegeting the text and bringing the text out for the benefit of the sheep so they can eat and grow off of those very same words. If that's not what they're known by, if they're not known by uh, exegeting text, if they're not known for um, using the Hebrew, going through the Greek, if they're not known for that, if they're not known for how they intently study the word and bring it out and make the word apply to their lives, not promoting prosperity, if they're known for that, you've got a good pastor. You've got a, That's a good preacher. But if they're known for the stunts they do, the clothes they wear, uh, the vision that they cast before you, if that's what they're known for, that's not a pastor. That's a motivational speaker who wants you to buy into what they're selling. And furthermore, if you're the kind of person who wants to go for that, if you like that kind of person, if you like the Keon Hendersons of the world, if you like the Creflo Dodds of the world, if you like the TDJs of the world, if you like the Todd Whites of the world, if you like the, the Benny Hens and the Kenneth Copeland, if you like these people, well, then the same holds true for you. Listen, Jesus is clear. He said, whoever wishes to save his life will lose it, but whoever wishes Whoever loses life for my sake will find it. You are the person, if that's if that appeals to you, 
And clearly what they're doing appeals to people because they've got a large enough following and they keep receiving money coming in. So much so that they've got to figure out ways to, to bring more in. You know what I know? How about I have our worship team to put together an album. Now the proceeds are going to come mainly to me and to the church, but let me do that. Let me promote that. Again, this is more self-promotion, more promoting your brand over the Bible, business over the Bible. Self-promoting pastors are not pastors of the Lord. They are not preachers of the gospel. They are preachers of this world. They'll find themselves in trouble with an angry God because they've got one job. That is to shepherd the flock of God that he purchased with his own blood, as Acts 20, 28 says. They're not doing so. They're promoting a brand, building a business, and in turn, um, making themselves out to be someone special. But when they're confronted with the true star, the true celebrity, they'll find out there's only room in this town for one star. Amen. Amen.